Hey everybody, Ben Ingram here with you. And like you, I am heartbroken today to have learned the news of the passing of Hank Aaron, who passed away today at the age of 86 years old. You know, it's been a really tough last few days and, and really tough last few weeks in Braves country. We've lost legendary pitcher Phil Necro. We have lost legendary pitcher and broadcaster Don Sutton. And today we have lost one of the true titans of our game, and that is Henry Aaron, as he passes on today. I, I think about his legacy, and when I think about the absolute biggest names in the history of our game, the titans of our industry, there's no bigger name than Hank Aaron. And don't even fool yourself trying to think that, that there's anyone bigger than Hank. Uh, there are a, a few players who are the elite of the elite, and when I think of Hank Aaron, I think of one of the true legends of our game. And it's hard to imagine there will ever be a player who matches uh, what he was able to accomplish in our game. And it's certainly impossible to think that anybody could ever surpass uh, some of the things that he did and what he meant for our game. And I could go on and on with superlatives and statistics and stories about his uh, on the field play and, and things like that. But uh, what makes Hank truly special and even more a remarkable human being was the legacy that he left behind with others and the impact that he made on others. What a true class act and a true gentleman he was. And, and at the end of the day, what really mattered the most to him was how he impacted others in a positive manner. That meant more to him than any number, any statistic, any championship, and any on-the-field accomplishment could ever mean. And that makes him, in my opinion, one of the greatest men uh, that I've ever met in my entire life. So I want to give you a few quick stories about Hank. Uh, I was never able to watch him play. He finished playing before I was born. Uh, but in my very first spring training in 2011 with the Braves, unannounced to any of us, Hank Aaron came into the Braves clubhouse and into the dugout and met with some of the media. I was able to get this picture that day of me interviewing Hank, and it was just a, a few quick minutes, but I was there one-on-one uh, -on -one with Hank and a few other guys were around and they had their opportunity to speak with Hank as well. That was a very special day. And I remember calling my father after this and, and telling him what had happened that day and he was just blown away that I was even in the same room with Hank Aaron, much less had an opportunity uh, to interview him. But one other story comes to mind when it comes to Hank. This was probably 2017, I believe, and, and Beth Marshall with the Braves uh, who is a dear friend of Hank's. They've had a great working relationship for a long time. She was able to put me in a position to sit down with Hank Aaron one-on-one. -on -one. And if you follow our coverage of the Braves here on 6 of the Fan, you're probably familiar with our Braves clubhouse report that runs on Wednesdays. And Kevin McAlpin and I were planning on taking this interview and putting it on the air to run for the clubhouse report the next week. So I sit down with Hank. I've got about nine to 10 minutes with him. And he's telling me stories that I've never heard before. He had a smile on his face the entire interview. It was really a delight watching the wheels in his mind turn, thinking about memories uh, that may have been dusty in his mind, but he was able to brush them off in his mind and, and shine light on memories that maybe he'd not thought of in a while. And it was just, a, it was so much fun to see that, uh, that light in his eye and him recalling stories that had happened 40, 50, 60 years ago as uh, he became a big league ball player and uh, won an MVP and, and won a, a World Series and all the All-Star games. And uh, he told me that the one thing that bothered him in his career was that he never won the Triple Crown. <laughs> and it's hard to imagine someone who accomplished all that Hank accomplished being upset uh, of something that he didn't accomplish, uh, but just an incredible ball player. But we had this interview, like I said, if I remember correctly, it was between nine and 10 minutes. And we finished the interview and I got a, a picture with him and it's still one of my favorite pictures I have to this day. And I was using Kevin's recorder. And when we finished, I handed him the recorder. He was going to edit it, the, uh, the interview down and then put it into our system and we could run it for the following Wednesday. So uh, he's messing with a recorder and he's saying, there's nine and a half minutes of data on this recorder, but there's no sound. And I'm thinking to myself, certainly we didn't have a recorder malfunction. And we're playing with it and trying to figure it out. Sure enough, the microphone on that recorder, for some reason, shorted out. It didn't work. We had nine and a half minutes of silence on the interview. Uh, so we had that data. We had nine and a half minutes of, of data on the recorder, but there was no audio to it. And I've been doing... Uh, I've been in broadcasting since 1998. That's the only time that has ever happened to me. And I think to myself, of all the players I've interviewed, 
uh, of all the people I've ever had a, a one on one with, the, the last person I'd ever want to, a, uh, a, a malfunction with a recorder to take place with would be Hank Aaron. And sure enough, that's what happened. So we never got the interview. I was heartbroken for days over that, but got a good picture with Hank and some great memories. And I've heard him tell some stories through the years that are just some of the best stories I've ever heard. So uh, he's truly going to be missed. He meant so much for so many people. Um, and he meant so much, not just for our game, but for our, our country uh, as a whole. Uh, what a great moment, as, as Vince Scully said, what a great moment for our country, what a great moment for the world upon him hitting uh, home run number 715. And those words resonate in my mind, thinking back on his life and the legend that he was. Uh, we will never forget you, Hank, and uh, it's certainly gonna be with heavy hearts that we go through the 2021 season. Not a lot of words today, uh, I thought, but but then I started thinking about Hank Aaron. I was like, no, I owe that man some words. Um, growing up in Atlanta, we weren't very good at baseball or pro sports or you know just about anything, And um, but we had Hank. And I remember in maybe I was first grade or second grade, he got a national endorsement, I want to say for Magnavox. And they didn't give black guys national endorsements, not outside of like OJ maybe. Um, and they certainly didn't give it to an Atlanta athlete. And so Hank retires and immediately comes to work for the Braves. And the cool part is, I bet you I saw Hank Aaron 150 times. And I mean like up close within like 10 feet or 50 feet or just like, just Hank. Um, and it wasn't just Hank. He was, it's Babe Ruth, it's Jim Thorpe, it's Jesse Owens, it's Joe Lewis, it's, it's, it's Abraham Lincoln. I mean, it is a legendary, iconic, luminary figure who literally, I would walk into a Braves game when I was in like fourth or fifth grade and I always knew where he would sit. And so I would just turn around and I would be within like 20 feet of Hank Aaron. And it was normal and regular and it wasn't a big deal. Um, but it always was and it should have been. Um, I mean, literally, it's, it's as big as you could get in the world of sports. And we had him here just as a regular thing. Um, one quick story. 1980 or 81, um, that's when baseball card shows started having some autograph guests and a local uh, Atlanta dealer a guy named Dick DeCourcy, he owned Georgia Music and Sports, he put together a baseball card show um, and hired Hank Aaron to come sign autographs for five dollars. Um, there was a big write-up in the AJC Sports, actually it was still two papers at that point, um, and so one of the papers had a write-up about how Hank Aaron selling out and how that's despicable and charging fans for autographs and five dollars is a lot of money. Well, after the show, Hank called Dick DeCourcy, the, 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 the guy who put the show on, and he said, um, Dick, how did you do, you know, we got some bad publicity, um, that might have kept people away, how, how did you do on your end? Um, you know, money-wise, because he paid Hank to come sign autographs, and Hank's like, did you make your money back? Dick said, he asked, so I was honest, and I said, Hank, I probably lost a couple of hundred dollars because of the publicity. He said, whatever the day was, two or three days later, he says, come by the stadium. And so he went by the stadium, Hank walked outside on the, the trunk of Hank's car, he signed bats, jerseys, balls, photos, baseball cards. He says, I'm going to sign enough stuff for you to take with you so that you'll do good on your end as well. He's the all-time home run king. He's, he's, he's as good a baseball player as there's ever been at the major league level. And he walked outside to stand on a parking lot and sign autographs for a guy to make sure that he got his end. Um, he's just a great man, and I miss him, and I'm sad. Hey, Braves country, Sean Ernie here. Just uh, spent a second to uh, send my condolences out to the family of Hank Aaron, uh, to all those Braves fans in Atlanta and Georgia, the Southeast, and really across the country that are mourning today. It is a sad day, uh, but it's a day to look back on the career and the life of, of a man who is really the, the true example uh, for anybody that wakes up every day wanting to do their best, both on and off the field. Uh, and that's Hank Aaron. And uh, I was blessed enough uh, to have a grandfather that worked in Major League B Baseball, and he left me some memorabilia. And uh, I would say my favorite piece, uh, especially on a day like today, is his scorecard from the night that Hank Aaron hit 715. Obviously, April 8th, 1974. He even wrote down the time, I guess 9.07 p.m. There's the uh, lineup. 
home run 907. And you can see after the fourth inning, uh, my grandfather uh, stopped keeping score. But I'm definitely blessed to have this, and I certainly cherish it even more on a day like today. Thanks. As great of a player as Hank Aaron was, he was an even greater man, as we uh, we put out on Twitter. All of us uh, in this business, for the most part, have been lucky enough to meet Hank Aaron over the years. And when he would do a radio appearance, he would do a television appearance, he would go out of his way to thank you many times over when it very much should have been the other way around. The pillar of strength in the city of Atlanta, baseball and beyond. Certainly a civil rights pioneer in baseball and beyond. Hank Aaron will be missed for so many different reasons. Our condolences to the family and friends of Hank Aaron and all of Braves country. Hey guys, Kevin McAlpin here. And of course, it's a tough day for baseball fans, not only here in Atlanta, but across the country, as we have lost yet another legend of the game of baseball and Hank Aaron today at the age of 86. Wanted to share two really, really quick stories. First, about the first time I met Hank Aaron. You know, we're around baseball players, we're around athletes, celebrities all the time. And I'm not going to say you get desensitized to it, but you almost get used to it. But when Hank Aaron walks in the room, there's this aura, there's this feeling of greatness when a guy like Hank shows up. And that's what happened in spring of 2014. We were down at Disney World at spring training. Uh, the team was on the field having their first full squad workout of the session. It was uh, probably middle of February. Hank had just got done talking to the team, wishing them well, encouraging them along the way. And he came into the dugout and sat down. And a local TV crew went over to him and talked to him and got a couple of sound bites from him. And I'm thinking, I've never met Hank Aaron. Here's my chance. He's sitting right there. He's not going anywhere. So I walked up to him and I said, hey, Mr. Aaron, I'm Kevin McAlpin with Braves Radio. Uh, was wondering if maybe 15, 20 minutes from now, you'd have a few minutes to chat that I could get you on our weekly Braves Clubhouse Report show. My thought was, I had to figure out what the heck do you ask Hank Aaron that he hasn't been asked a million times. And that was going to be my chance to go sit down and put some notes together and figure out what exactly I was going to ask him. And he looked at me and he looked at the bench and he tapped the bench a couple of times and said, have a seat, son. So now I'm on the spot. And I'm going to be completely frankly honest with you. I have no idea what we talked about, but he was so gracious and so kind and courteous with his time. And it's just something I'll never, ever forget. We know how great of a ball player he was, but for as great of a ball player as he was, and you're going to see this reaction around the baseball world, he was an even better person. And he always made time for everybody. And every time we saw him from then on out at the ballpark, it was a handshake, it was a smile, it was a how you doing. Um, and it was just, it's something that I'll never forget. I'll tell my kids, I'll tell my great grandkids about it uh, someday, hopefully down the road. And uh, that's that's the first time I ever met Hank Aaron. And I was I was literally, when I say I was shaking like a leaf, this is what my hand was doing when I was, when I was holding the microphone. Uh, but again, uh, it was just a remarkable experience. The other thing that I'll never forget is being in the clubhouse. It was probably 2013 or 2014. And he walked in there during spring training. He walked in with Bobby Cox. And again, they were getting ready to talk to the team. And I looked over at some of the younger players and their jaws dropped. They almost were in awe, in shock that Hank Aaron was there. And when I say that there's a lot of those young players that like to talk quite a bit, uh, there was not a lot of talking going on. There was a lot of listening going on. And that's one of the things that I think uh, was really uh, remarkable about Hank is that, man, when he talked, everybody listened. So obviously a sad day. Here in Atlanta, sad day for baseball fans. Man, we continue to lose legends of the game. and We have lost far too many over the last 13 months. So, of course, thoughts to Hank Aaron, his family, of course, his extended Braves family as well uh, on, uh, on a tough day. But uh, a lot of great stories, a lot of great memories that I know all of us will cherish uh, for as long as we live, getting a chance to be around guys like Hank. My Hank Aaron story is uh, moved here to Atlanta in 2012. And, you know, obviously, you know, anybody that grew up outside the city, you remember the team through TBS and just being a baseball fan in general, you always remember uh, Hank Aaron. Um, but, you know, before I had met him, um, I, uh, you know, just like everybody else, I think, you know, just opening day parades, um, you know, in a car going around the warning track those types of things. But uh, I remember before I came here to work at 680, uh, it was when I was on uh, the digital side of this business. And um, I uh, went to um, Jim Harbaugh, uh, his uh, satellite camp that he had. Um, and he did a round table before the camp with Hank Aaron and Ambassador Andrew Young. And uh, afterwards, I uh, had a chance to uh, ask Hank a question. I remember that. I, right now, I can't remember. I need to go back and try to find that tape and listen to it. But um, I just remember that day 
uh, Jim Harbaugh uh, wearing his jersey uh, out to the camp. And, um, you know, I just I think that, you know, with Hank Aaron, it's just one of those things that uh, his baseball, obviously it spoke for itself. And, uh, you know, he's the true home run king. I don't think anybody can dispute that. Um, but um, it's it's like I said on Twitter, uh, I think that it's a situation with him that uh, his life after baseball was just as important of what he did in terms of his charity work. And also, too, just being a great guy. I mean, you know, I think Hank could have been somebody that let you know every time you spoke with him, hey, I'm the home run king. But it almost kind of seemed like, you know, he wanted you, or not wanted you, but but you knew that about him, and he was fine with that. He didn't have to boast about it, and um, that's something that's that's really a, a gift to have of uh, being, you know, the quiet confidence, uh, I guess. But um, we lost a great one for sure, and um, you know, Atlanta is Atlanta because of uh, Hank Aaron. I guess it's kind of fitting. Anybody who knows me, Big John from Six Eighty, the fan. It's kind of fitting that I'm wearing a hat. Uh, and representation of Mr. Vince Scully as the call for the uh, home run that Hank Aaron hit. Today is a day where not only a guy who was a great baseball player, but what he did for African Americans in the sport of baseball, that was a huge step. He'll be missed. Uh, I send my condolences and prayers to his family. I thank you for everything you did, Mr. Aaron. You did a great thing. You did more than just baseball. You did something that in a time where in a Jim Crow South, in a world where African Americans, black people, were not respected, were not even were barely acknowledged as human beings, you did something to show how great you were, and your legacy will live on forever. We will miss you. Losing Hank Aaron may be the toughest for me because he's my favorite player of all time, um, and today's my birthday. So to lose my favorite player on my birthday is uh, is extra tough. But um, I grew up watching the Braves with my dad, who was the biggest Hank Aaron fan in the world, and that's why I'm such a Hank Aaron fan. My dad told me about going to the 72 All-Star game at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium and seeing Hank Aaron hit a home run. So it just hit home for me more than anything because I lost my dad a few years ago, and now the uh, the player that we love the most together to uh, to lose him is uh, is something else. Certainly want to uh, send regards to uh, the Aaron family. Thinking about y'all, love y'all, and um, gosh, God rest you, uh, Mr. Aaron. We love you. Hammer and Hank, superhero to me, Joseph Fitzgerald Hamilton. I, I didn't have a superhero growing up. I didn't have a hometown hero to root for being from South Carolina. And it was you, Hammer and Hank. And now that I remember you, uh, as you ascend up in heaven, uh, your gratitude, your, your 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 unselfishness, your ability to lead, uh, your character, your integrity, the fact that I think that you are a better person than you were a baseball player, and we know you were a hell of a baseball player. It saddens me, but I'm going to take this time and be very, very thankful and remember the good times. And I'm going to celebrate what you meant to me. Thank you for instilling in me the ability to forgive, the ability to try and treat others uh, like you want to be treated. Home team Brandon Leak here. It's a sad day, January 22nd, 2021, with the passing of baseball legend, Atlanta Braves legend, and human legend, Hank Aaron. And while a lot of people in his family, his extended family, Braves family, and baseball family will be sad, we should take the time to celebrate the life of a very unselfish person, a person who was a person of dignity, a person of character, and a person of selflessness. And hopefully, we will all take a piece of Hank Aaron with us every day, the walk of our lives. And remember, he is not just a baseball player or an athlete. He has been a fantastic addition to human beings in the human race. So this is a sad loss for humanity but a time for great reflection. Mr. Aaron, thank you for all of your time. Thank you for all of your moments. Thank you for all of your unselfishness. And thank you for walking with us in sports here in Atlanta. We're going to miss you. We love you and condolences to your family. So obviously a really sad day for a lot of us in Braves country. If you're born and raised in this city as a Braves fan, you just, you know, Hank Aaron is synonymous with the Atlanta Braves. And for me, I was a little too young to see Hank play. But as you grow up, in the 80s, you start to see some of the clips of all the important Hank Aaron moments like 715 and 755 and you just know what he means. Then I get to this business and 
luckily enough get a chance to meet Hank Aaron a couple of times and to shake his hand and to interview him. And when I say it's like the most surreal thing ever because you're standing in front of this legend, this mythical figure that's now from me to you, and he couldn't be more gracious, more humble, just the nicest man you could ever be around and you realize the things he did, what he accomplished, and the importance he played not only in our city but in the game of baseball. It's a, it's a huge loss. It's been a very tough time these last couple of weeks. First to lose Phil Necro, Don Sutton, and then Hank Aaron. It's a, it's a gut punch. Condolences, thoughts, and prayers out to uh, the Aaron family, to all of us in Braves country. It's, just, it's a loss of just epic proportion, and uh, Hank Aaron will be missed forever.